So hey, how you doing? Today, we are going to work on our little uh, How to Pour the Chainsaw series. And today, we're going to start comparing the cylinder of this old P70 to a more modern cylinder, that of the style of like a 371, 372. Uh, the one we're actually going to be using is from a 371. Now, we're going to take a look inside here and kind of compare the differences. Now, the area we're specifically looking at today is going to be the squish band, you know, the combustion chamber, and so forth. You will notice other differences. Uh, the transfers are different, the exhaust is different, the intake is different, and we will look at those further down the road uh, whenever we get to that point of working on them. But today, we're going to look at the combustion chamber specifically the squish, all that stuff. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, make sure you get your subscription in and hit that alarm bell so that you receive notification whenever I post the next video. We are following the Two Stroke Tuner's Handbook in this build process. We're reading the book, we are taking suggestions directly out of the book, and we are going to apply those suggestions directly to this build. So if you're interested, that you can get a copy of the Two Stroke Tuner's Handbook on eBay, or you can find a copy online and download a PDF form. So a while back, I gave you kind of a homework assignment to read up on that section. And then we kind of went over it and summarized a few different things that are in there. And today we're actually gonna look in there and we're gonna discuss, kind of come up with a game plan here. Alrighty, so what do you say we get on with this and take a look? All right, so there we go. We got the P70 on the left and a 371 on the right. And you're already probably noticing a difference between the two. Uh, you will notice more differences as we look at this, these two saws. Uh, you'll notice it everywhere. There's differences in every step of the way. And we're going to kind of compare them. Uh, today we are specifically looking at the combustion chamber, so we're going to see what kind of improvements we can do to this combustion chamber. But we want to kind of compare the design to a more modern one. Alrighty. All right. So our first candidate here is the 371. Um, so if you take a look at that squish band, it's pretty decent. Uh, there's definitely room for improvement. Uh, if, we, if we remember reading in the Two Stroke Tutors Handbook, the optimum performance level is at about 50% of the bore. And we can tell just from looking at it that we aren't quite to 50%, um, but you know, it's actually at a decent amount that you know we, we could expect a decent performance and proper cooling from the squish band. But there's some things you can do to change this. So you could machine a little bit off of that squish band and work at machining, machining the base of the cylinder off to help push the piston further up in. That will make the combustion chamber smaller, thus increasing compression. Um, as we read in the book, more compression can increase power substantially, but it does create heat issues, which is one of the reasons a larger squish band will help. It'll help keep the engine cooler under the high compression situations. But what do you say we compare this squish band to the P70 and see what the difference is? All right, so there's our P70. You can see there's a little bit of a difference. Uh, the, uh, the combustion chamber there, you can see it's a little bit offset. It's not dead center. Uh, there's definitely a squish band there, pretty reasonable. Uh, there's a little bit more on the one side than the other, but definitely room for improvement. Uh, we could try to machine a little bit off of there and work it, you know, taking some material off the deck of the cylinder right up in here. And then what that would do is cause the piston to travel even further up in there, compressing it even more, giving us more compression, which will in turn give us more power. Uh, again, it's one of those things you got to take in consideration is the heat. Uh, the squish band will help protect the engine from heat. It's kind of a trade-off. You have to decide what kind of cutting you're going to do as for what kind of modifications. Now, whenever I talk to Briscoe, so Briscoe is going to do our machine work for us on this build. And I'm going to ask him to see if he can take 20 thousandths off of that combustion chamber. 
um, and then take the piston and put it up there to within 20 thousandths of squish. Um, that's our goal and we're gonna see if we can do it. Um, I don't know how much material he'll have to, to remove and there are limitations. We have to take in consideration the piston um, and I will show you that in a second. There's a, there's a limited amount of material we can take away because of the piston. Now let me get into showing you that. Now I forgot to mention right here another important fact. Um, so the space between the piston and the squish bam, the fuel that is in that area does not get burnt with the main charge as we read in the Two Stroke Tuner's Handbook. So the idea of reducing the squish will move some of that fuel into the center of the cylinder where it will actually get used to create power uh, instead of only for cooling purposes. So reducing the squish will help gain power just because it will move some wasted charge towards the center. Thus, it'll be able to give us more power by doing that. Now, all of that is based off of the two-stroke tuner's handbook. You know, the, the charge that's in the squish band is used for cooling, but by reducing the squish, we will move some of that fuel into the center and it helps in the end. So if you remember earlier, I had you mark the exhaust port with our marker so that we can see exactly exhaust where port. lands on the piston and you can see there's a little bit of room here between here and here but we never want the bottom to open up into the exhaust port see right now this is where the bottom of the exhaust port is whatever it's at top dead center but if we go too far we could potentially open up this area into the exhaust port. And if that happens, we could potentially have exhaust gases trying to come in and mix into the crankcase. And it could also cause us to lose some of our charge from the crankcase out the exhaust port. It can severely compromise the performance of your saw. Uh, there are situations that it does work. Um, I, I won't get into the details of it, but there are you know, some situations where it does work but I can already tell you on this type of a build, it is not a good idea to do it. Um, for example, I have seen some RC engines that spin north of 16,000 RPM um, and those run just fine on a free port situation. Now free porting is whenever this opens up in the exhaust port, exposing the crankcase volume to the exhaust. Now, you know, some of those RC engines might operate just fine in a free, free port situation, but they are spinning, you know, 16,000 or more RPM. This saw will not be doing that. And if we do expose it to a free port situation, it will cause it to lose power. So whenever we send this saw to Briscoe, we gotta take in consideration, can he take enough material out of this without it free porting? Um, that's one of the things he's going to have to address when he's working on the machining of it. So we don't know what the end result's going to be just yet. But you see, whenever Briscoe receives this, he's going to be able to put it on the lathe, figure everything out, and you know he'll be able to go a certain amount. But there's there's a limitation. There's there's many things that can cause limitations to how far you can go. Uh, for one, for for instance. The chrome plating in the cylinder, or some cylinders have Nicosil plating. Uh, I'm used to the home lights, they're, they're chrome plated. This one I might actually have Nicosil, which is a better material. But sometimes it doesn't go all the way to the top. And if it doesn't go all the way to the top, you could potentially have a situation where the piston goes too far and the ring passes over the plating. And if that happens, you'll rip the top of the piston right off. Um, so that's one of the things you gotta keep in consideration whenever doing this type of work. Um, he also has the option that he could, if he can get enough out of it, he could try to cut like a 20,000th pop-up into the piston and try to get us a little more compression that way. These are all different possibilities in this, 
that he can look at to try to increase the, the compression of the saw and get it as good as possible. Now, there's another factor to consider here. Compression can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. Uh, compression does cause heat. And the more compression you get, the more dramatic the climb in the heat gets. So that's one of the things you gotta consider on how the saw is being used. In a firewood situation, sometimes a super high compression is not the best idea because it, it is constantly under power, constantly under load, cut after cut after cut, and it can cause a higher heat situation. It can cause you issues. Now you will see a lot of builders who don't try to push the compression as high for their customers. That's because they don't know the customer. If they don't run a sharp chain, they could run up in a situation where the customer goes out and in the first couple of uses burns the saw up because they're running a dull chain, causing the saw to take 10 times longer in a cut, which causes it to build heat way faster, way more, and it just essentially burns the saw up. So the sharpness of the chain on a person that you do not really know is one of the reasons you will see a lot of professional builders don't push the compression as hard as they can. But there is another reason as well. And this actually can go into the racing world also. You see, a, a saw that's not pushing as high a compression is easier to start. It's easier to pull the cord over. You know, you're not trying to pull past 200 plus pounds of compression. And it can be a lot easier to start. But this can also go into the racing world as well. You see, if you're running a super high compression build in a racing situation, so it, it kind of depends on how the start of the race begins. See, if you're starting with the saw warmed up and running, laying on the ground, a super high compression might benefit you to get a good fast cut. But say you're in a situation where the saw is not running, it's sitting on the ground, it's not running, and you have to be able to start that thing in one quick jerk of the rope. A super high compression may not be your best option because they can be extremely difficult to pull over. Uh, you might find yourself trying to pull two, three, four times to get it running, and that's not what you want in a racing situation, especially those in which you have to physically start the saw before you make your cut. Uh, now those saws use other methods as well as working on the squish band to, in, to gain their power. And those are some of the things we will be addressing in this build. Um, there's different ways to get power out of the saw. Compression is the first thing you look at. There's other things you can do as well. So that's one of the things you wanna consider when building your saw is how much your compression you're gonna run. Is it gonna be a firewood saw? Is it gonna be a logging saw? Is it gonna be a just a friendly little competition type of saw? You know, you're gonna be starting out with a saw running or are you really gonna to try to get into a competition where you have to start that saw, get it to the wood and make three cuts as fast as possible? Those saws may not have as much compression as you might think. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed this little video, a little bit of something for you to think about in your project and Hopefully here soon, we're gonna to get to see a little video of Briscoe doing some machine work on this P70. Uh, I'm at the point now that I'm gonna clean it up and I'm gonna send it to him and I'm gonna see if I can get him to do a little bit of a video for us of the machine work process and maybe even explain what he's doing. I haven't spoke to him about it yet, so let's see what happens. Alrighty, hey, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.